Good day learners, this is Easy Engineering. For today's topic, we're going to talk about epidemics and pandemics. It was very difficult to go one day during the year 2020 without hearing something about COVID-19 in the news. Or even most of us are really affected by the resulting crisis. A crisis which we concluded first as an epidemic and turned into pandemic. And so we may ask, what is epidemic and why it is different from pandemic? Let's dive in and find out. First, let's talk about epidemic. An epidemic is distinguished when an unusually large number of people in a community get a disease at the same time. This makes the people deduce that there's a disease being spread among them. Epidemic diseases include the typhus, influenza, the black death, malaria, and smallpox. So what causes an epidemic? Well, there's many to mention. One way an epidemic can begin is if the food or water gets infected with a disease, especially if the local water supply of a city gets infected since people drink it. So will the infections get inside their bodies at the same time, making a number of people sick and this starts an epidemic. Next is the increased virulence of the disease. Well, in many occasions, the pathogen or the germ that causes a disease may evolve and become more virulent. That means it can infect more people easily and make them sick. It could also start with introduction of a new disease, like when the COVID-19 just erupted and infected a lot of people without us knowing. This has also occurred from the smallpox disease. Lower resistance to a disease could also start an epidemic. In places where poor nutrition is present, people tend to have lower resistance to a disease causes an epidemic. And lastly, natural disasters and wars. Natural disasters and wars can cause the rise of infected water which is very common and is bringing in new diseases with it. Wars and disasters also promote the lowering of resistance to disease of the population and this starts an epidemic. Fun fact learners, did you know that the name virus was coined from the Latin word meaning slimy liquid or poison? Well, exactly what it says, right? Since diseases are the cause, the question is, how do diseases spread? Disease can spread and be transmitted in a lot of different ways. So beware. In some cases, insects can be a reason since they can carry diseases and transmit them from person to person. Small insects can carry insect-borne diseases like the bubonic plague and malaria. Diseases can also be spread through airborne transmission. This means that infections can also travel through the air, especially when a person coughs or sneezes. An example of airborne disease is the influenza. And lastly, some diseases can be spread through infected food or water. This includes diseases like cholera and typhoid fever. Making vaccines help us become immune to those diseases. Fun fact learners, did you know that vaccines contain the virus in them? But they contain dead or weakened viruses. Exposure to this helps the body recognize and produce antibodies to protect against the disease. So how do epidemics end? Even though epidemics are scary and they can spread quickly where millions of people may perish, they eventually do come to an end. Isn't that a relief? There are some of different reasons why an epidemic may end. First is when there are no more people to infect, right? When an epidemic starts out, it usually attacks the weakest and most susceptible people. Those people may perish or survive. And if those people survive, they can build up immunities to the disease. And so after some time, the disease finds fewer and fewer hosts it can easily attack until all people are immune or gone, and that epidemic ends. Some diseases could also be just seasonal or happen during a specific period of time only. An example of this is the flu. It is spread more easily during the winter and tends to die out coming springtime. And lastly, there may be fewer carriers of the disease after some time. Maybe some of them are cleaned or extinguished by man. And sometimes the carriers of the disease may become inactive an example of this is the malaria transmitted by mosquitoes 
those mosquitoes become inactive during the cold weather or winter, so no more carriers. Now how about the pandemic? What is a pandemic? A pandemic is just a big epidemic. This is a much larger scale since the epidemic has spread across a large region, typically across multiple continents or worldwide. This is very scary for mankind since it could wipe us all. But don't worry, lots of modern technology helps to prevent and cure a pandemic. There are six simple stages to undergo before a disease can be considered as pandemic according to the World Health Organization. First, the virus is found in animals, not in humans since humans are more aware of what they are taking in their bodies. Second, the virus has been found in humans. Third, there are small clusters of the disease found, but it is not spreading rapidly. Fourth, the virus is being passed from human to human and there are community outbreaks of the disease. Fifth, the virus has spread to at least two countries. A full-fledged pandemic is imminent. And lastly, the disease is now classified as a full-fledged pandemic where most of every country has the disease. So learners, let's all be aware of the steps and cleanliness to make ourselves safe from diseases. Be sure to share it with everyone you know. So that's it. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Once again, this is Easy Engineering. Have a nice day.